Holy shnikes, Gibson won their lawsuit against Dean Guitars. Sort of. <laughs> if you're not familiar with the situation, the ball, Gibson got the ball rolling on this back in 2017, I believe, when they sent uh, Dean Guitars, whose parent company is called Armadillo, uh, a cease and desist order regarding trademark uh, infringement of things like the Flying V design, the Explorer design, uh, the headstock design of a couple models, uh, you know, as well as a few other things. I think it was like seven different points, you know. Again, those cease and desist uh, letters were sent back in uh, back in the Henry Jeskowitz era. Well, fast forward, Henry Jeskowitz is out, you know, the uh, JC is in, you know, uh, JC Curley is in. Gibson is now owned by an investment company called KKR. Uh, and the, you know, 2019, they filed a lawsuit against Dean. I think, honestly, I think it was just, if, if memory serves, it was just days after their infamous play authentic video that they still don't know what they were thinking with that. So they did the play authentic video. They followed that up with a lawsuit of Dean Guitars, uh, lawsuit against Dean Guitars and, uh, in 2019. And fast forward and, you know, the court has determined that uh, Gibson is, in fact, within their rights to protect their intellectual property and has determined that Gibson is the winner of the lawsuit and has subsequently awarded them $4,000. Four, four grand. That's what Gibson got. That ain't even going to scratch the surface of even their legal fees. <laughs> uh, why is that funny? Well, if you if you dig into it, you would you you will find that Gibson was looking for seven million dollars out of Dean for this lawsuit. Seven million. That's seven figures. They got four thousand. That's four figures. <laughs> Which, like I said, isn't even going to scratch the surface of their legal fees for this whole this whole giant giant mess. Number one, uh, I mean that that won't even pay for a custom shop flying V these days. $4,000, I have to assume that uh, Dean CEO uh, Evan Rubinson, who has been pretty, uh, Evan Rubinson has been pretty vocal, I think, uh, about the goings on of this lawsuit. In fact, he even commented on my original video on, uh, that I posted on it uh, here a while back. Anyway, I'm willing to bet Evan Rubinson was probably laughing his ass off when he was writing that $4,000 check on the way out of the courthouse uh, so he can just go back to work and go about his business. Gibson issued a statement after the lawsuit uh, was finally over, and they said that they are happy with the results of the lawsuit and that they feel that they did the guitar community uh, as a whole a great service by doing so. And I'm paraphrasing, but that's, that's basically the, that's the meat and potatoes of it. Bullshit! You are not, don't try to bullshit us into thinking that you're happy with winning $4,000 in a, of, uh, you know, of a court, in a corporate lawsuit when you were looking for $7 million. <laughs> bullshit. Total bullshit. We know that ain't true. You know, the other thing is, what great service did you guys do to the, do for the guitar community by doing this? Like I said, Evan Rubinson was likely, you know, laughing his ass off as he was writing that $4,000 check. You know, and number two... You guys still have other pending lawsuits against companies like Kiesel and Heritage, you know, that also go back decades. Nobody's afraid of you anymore. You know, let me and let me first clarify the reason why the court only awarded you four thousand dollars is because they also determined that while yes, you do have a right to protect your intellectual property. You waited four decades to do so. They're not just going to go hand over $7 million to you after you waited four decades to get off your asses and do something about protecting your intellectual property. You still have pending lawsuits with both Heritage and Kiesel Guitars, both of which are similar situations where you have waited decades to do anything about protecting your intellectual property. You landed four Gs at the end of this lawsuit. Nobody's afraid of you anymore. You know, everybody's, you know, you know, everybody's laughing, you know, no, nope, you know, and, and the precedent has been set. You know, nobody is going to be afraid of Gibson anymore, ever. You know, the likelihood of anybody being afraid of Gibson anymore is extremely low. Now that the precedent has been set, you know, and me personally, I'm kind of getting tired of the bullshit 
public service announcements because this is, you know, again, it's just not believable. What great service did you do to the guitar community? You're looking for seven mil, you got four Gs. I mean, come on. You know, who are you trying to fool? Who are you, who, who are you fooling? Seriously. Look, I'm a Gibson guy. I always have been. I own and play several Gibson guitars, and I have for years. Yeah, but I'm also very critical of them because, like everybody else, I just want Gibson to get back to building great guitars, uh, and I think they are getting getting back to a lot closer to doing that. Uh, but get back to building great guitars that everybody likes, and you know, quit trying to be the heroes uh, of the guitar industry and try and set you know you know try and make all the rules. You know, the rules are set by what the consumer market wants, not what the corporations want. And as soon as Gibson gets out of that mentality and starts li and and really truly starts listening to you know to customers and listening to people in the market, maybe they can get back to the great you know to the status of greatness that they were they were that they once had achieved. So it's over, it's done. Let's put it behind us. Let's get back to playing guitar.